I think I speak for all horror fans when I say, where has Naomi Scott been? Where did that performance come from? Can we get more of her in horror, please? Sky, pull it together ah! and get back out there. No, I will not let this thing <laughs> use me. So Smile 2 stars Naomi Scott playing Sky Riley, global superstar pop sensation. And in this one, the entity from the first movie is back again. It is latched onto her. She starts seeing creepy things. She's seeing people smiling at her for no reason in the distance. She just feels like she's losing her mind. And immediately right off the bat from the opening scene of this movie, you will notice the massive step up in production value and directing work from Parker Finn. This movie looks a lot better. It's filmed a lot more creatively. There's a lot more artistic flair to it. And I was here for it, honestly. Because this movie does kind of play is a more of the same sequel to the original. I think if you like that original movie, you'll probably enjoy this one as well, and it's definitely worth at least checking out. But even though it is more of the same, it feels a lot different to experience it than the first movie was. Starting off with the opening scene of this, you're reintroduced to a character from the first film, and the entire thing is shot in a really cool tracking shot. You're watching this guy run through this house. It's a 10 to 15 minute shot over his shoulder, all filmed in one take, similar to Old Boy and Daredevil's stairwell scene. You know those scenes, you'll have a better example to compare this to, but it is just really cool cool really artistic the action is really elevated because you're right in it with him you're over his shoulder i really liked what they went for and it really does set the tone for what this movie's going to be because as i said it is more of the same but it feels so much different due to these directing choices and how cool the cinematography is in this because the way i would describe this entire movie is purposefully chaotic there's a very anxious feeling you get as a viewer watching this movie it is so hectic at all points it really reminded me of the movie that just came out recently the substance if you've seen that one you have another movie to compare this to the filming style it just is so hectic and it feels like something is always happening you get constant drone shots the camera is constantly flipped upside down incredibly tense zooms a lot of tracking shots it just feels very personal and i think that's really the point of why it was filmed this way i really didn't expect that going into this movie but it was a pleasant surprise i did not expect it to be as artistic as it is this is all because of parker finn the guy who directs these movies he has improved so much as a director from the first movie to this movie he understands jump scares so well this guy just has a great eye for the camera when it comes to the building tension and for that reason and this movie feels like a total experience more than a movie it really feels like you're in there with the characters and obviously naomi scott plays the lead in this sky riley and she is absolutely awesome in this role i mean i've always thought she's a phenomenal singer i really like her music i think she's super talented but i'd never seen her actually act on screen and i was really caught off guard by how good she is she is fantastic as this lead dare i say oscar worthy i mean that word holds no power anymore there's no worth to it nobody really cares about the oscars people have been getting snubbed for so long but if it does have any weight and it still matters, I think she's up for discussion because she is absolutely fantastic in this role. She's asked to do so much, every emotion in the book, happiness, excitement, crying, fear. She just carries the shit out of this movie. She's basically the only lead of this film. She's on film for the entire two hours. So every scene in the entire movie, you're going to be watching Sky Riley. So it's important that she nails this performance and she does because she is centric to nearly every scene in it. Smile 2 also has a really weird blend going on where it's mixing all of these creative of filming styles with music elements because she is a pop superstar in this so there might be some fans who get taken out of it just like they did with the movie trap where it feels like there's way too much music in it because that is a heavy emphasis in this film she's a pop superstar she's constantly performing preparing for her song she's doing live music in this some people might get taken out of it and just feel like they're having a concert and an artist forced down their throat to further their career i totally understand it but i'm somebody who's actually really on board with this modern trend we're getting where we're constantly mixing music with movies and we're getting a lot of performances in them i liked it in trap i liked it a lot more in this but this is also coming from someone who really liked the music in this film i'm a big fan of pop music i really liked her original song so judge away in the first smile movie obviously had a mental health angle to it but in the second movie it's a lot more clear and obvious to the point where ray charles could see it in this one you have sky riley pop icon who seemingly has it all but she also feels inadequate broken recovering addict it's tackling something that's kind of become a little bit tropey at this point someone who seemingly has it all but also has nothing but it's something i always kind of empathize with so i do like the angle they were going for here i did like how many situations and scenarios are presented in this when it comes to it creeping up on you because that's what anxious thoughts and mental health is it does just creep up on you you'll randomly just be out about you'll be speaking in public having a performance you'll be alone in your apartment and then it'll just creep up on you derail your whole day just like these smiling faces a little bit artsy for some people but i do think it's a really cool medium to explore this in and getting back to the way this movie 
movie is filmed and the camera work, it is all very purposeful and specific and just smothering. It is relentless in how it makes you feel as a viewer. Very uncomfortable to be around this character. A lot of tracking shots, a lot of zooms, a lot of over the shoulder shots to make you feel like you're in her shoes. Anytime something good is happening, you hear that music drop, you start getting uncomfortable. You know something terrifying is about to jump out to her. The jump scares are good as always. It all felt like it was a very creative choice to make you feel as the viewer, like you're living out this experience with the main character, Sky, which made the entire movie feel a lot more personal and a lot more dreadful, at least to me. This movie starts off a little bit slow. The first 20 or 30 minutes is just character building, getting to know this world, meet our main character, Sky, learn her past. But when it gets going, it really starts ramping up progressively. And towards the end, this movie really gets fucking wild. And I'm sure a lot of people coming into this review are wondering, but is the movie scary? Because fans of the genre, fans of that first film, they love the jump scares. It really has a reputation at this point as being a great jump scare movie. Happy to report, Smile 2, absolute masterclass in jump scares. So if you like the first film's jump scares, more of the same in this one, you'll probably have a blast with the jump scares. I don't know if there's as many, probably a couple less, and on average, they might not be as good, but this movie still definitely has two to three of the year's best scares overall. So if you're looking for a scary movie, you're ready to jump in your seat, I think Smile 2 has that for you as well. There's one scene in particular in this, the way they set up the jump scare, I don't see how everybody doesn't jump. It is done so perfectly. So again, more of the same, but also done in a fresh, unique way that I thought was pretty awesome, honestly. There were a couple of things I didn't like, though. The first thing being i think the trailer just gives away way too much of this movie like a lot of films nowadays it gives away a lot of the best moments and scares of this or maybe i should say the setup to the best moments because it really felt like i was kind of reliving a paint by numbers first 30 minutes of the movie with all those setups i'd seen 15 times in the trailer again if you haven't seen the trailer you didn't see the trailer as many times as me going to the movie theaters you probably don't have this experience so i understand this is a personal thing but it was my experience so i need to point it out the other thing being segueing back to what i just said about the trailer this movie does take about 20 or 30 minutes to get going and it has a couple of pacing issues during the middle where it feels like a couple of scenes could be removed again going back to that trailer thing it would be interesting to see if i never saw this trailer if i had the same experience but it felt like it dragged a little bit because i was just reliving those moments again and I didn't need that setup because I'd seen that trailer so many times. Well, no, I'd be interested to hear down below if you guys had the same experience, maybe if you didn't see this trailer. But that's what I thought, at least. And lastly, this movie definitely tries to be a lot bigger and bloodier than the first film. Broken bones, visceral images, it tries to go there. And I don't know if it was just me, but I thought the CGI blood in this film was pretty bad. The practical effects were just completely okay, I guess. Again, maybe a personal thing. I don't know if it's because I just came from Terrifier and those are just so absurdly good. But this movie's practical effects, CGI, setting up the kills, things like that, it really left a little something to be desired. Not the worst, though. But overall, guys, I had a really good time with this one. I thought it was a batshit crazy movie going experience. It's kind of bigger and bloodier and better than the first film in a lot of ways. Great character in Sky Riley who carries this film. Awesome scares, two or three of the year's best. The scares keep getting progressively more interesting. Awesome music, the way they incorporate it, the chaotic cinematography. I thought this movie was a really cool experience. Pleasant surprise that this world keeps getting better. I think this movie is definitely worth buying on Blu-ray. So if any of you guys seen the second smile yet, did you like the first smile? Comment down below, let me know. As always, if you haven't subscribed, join me down below. That's all I got in this video. Peace.